Hi, so we will be continuing our discussion on cloud computing. Today we will be discussing on uh, another major aspect of this uh, cloud computing which is uh, which we can say cloud security. So, we will talk uh, we will try to have a uh, brief overview of, of the security per se and how this security affects uh, cloud computing. As, as uh, we all uh, understand that uh, when, when we go for cloud computing whether it is the infrastructure as a service, a platform as a service or software as a service or anything as a service, what we are relying on a third party service provider. So, our application data processes are running on some third party. So, whenever it is running on third party the security becomes the issue especially that what is the availability where my data is stored, whether it is being seen or intercepted by my uh, some other parties and those concerns will be uh, there. And especially if this is a mission critical uh, operations or missile mission critical data or some critical data like banking data, defense data, even academic data related to uh, students results and other things this needs to be uh, looked into in a very various uh, serious fashion. We will see in the course of the things that one of the uh, one of the major hindrance towards going towards this cloud is more than technology rather more this concern about security what will be the policies what data policy etcetera and so and so forth. So, with this uh, we will start our uh, thing, but before going to that uh, I thought that it will be quick uh, brush up of what, what do you mean by security in terms of when we talk about computer security or information security or network security. So, what are the different aspects are there? Uh, it is likely that all those aspects in some form of other will be also reflected in the cloud, but the concern may be different. So, before going to the cloud security per se we will see security in general for any computing service, computing and networking service. Okay. So, uh, if we look at uh, security what are the three basic uh, components one is the confidentiality, integrity and availability right this is what we say CIA type uh, components right. Confidentiality deals with keep keeping the data and resources hidden uh, that you do not know that where the data is that it is confidential. Integrity is that uh, data integrity is mentioned, maintained like uh, or origin or the source integrity is mentioned may, uh, maintained right like so that uh, whatever I send from A to B, B receives the same thing uh, or uh, that uh, integrity or authentication of the source that I am getting from the A itself it is there and availability enabling access to the data and resources that is another important component right. So, uh, that is what we see that most of the attacks are going as uh, denial of services where the availability is compromised. So, the everything is fine, but finally, you do not have the resource at your hand. So, it is some sort of a DOS or sometimes the DDoS type of uh, attacks. So, any security attack on the other say that any action that compromises the security of the information or any action which violates the CIA uh, type of things that is basic premise right. There are a lot of other components we will see. So, if we look at there are immediately it will come up that there are typically four type of uh, things may be there. One is inter interruption, one is interception, uh, modification, fabrication. So, these four components more or less encompasses or combination of this more or less uh, or it encompasses all type of things which are uh, which are compromised during a uh, attack. So, our basic model is a source sending a data to a destination and when we talk ab, talk about uh, interruption. So, that the, the message or the communication path is interrupted. It can be interception that the goes from source to destination, but somebody else also uh, intercept and listening to the thing. So, this is attack on availability, this availability is blocked. This is attack on confidentiality like you are sending from A to B or S to D and somebody else that intruder I is listening to that. It can be attack on modification that this attack on integrity of that data right. So, or even the origin right source A is sending to D, but in between there is a intruder I which intercepts the message changes the message and send it to D. 
So, D for D it is a message coming from S and the message M has been changed to message M dash, but still the for D it is it is the message which is sent me which has been sent or which has been forwarded by uh, sources. So, that is a attack on integrity. So, there can be attack on authenticity right I I pretend or intruder pretend to be the sources right. So, and so the it is attack on authenticity. So, I need to authenticate who who is my source. So, before receiving a message I need to know that I am supposed to receive from a authenticated source is and I am receiving those messages. So, there is a uh, attack on authenticity or what we say fabrication. Now, uh, so one side we see that the major security components other side that the type of attacks which can be there uh, what a, a, and if you look at this uh, this can this is true for whether it is a computer security or a information security or network security or cloud security right. They it may have different type of characteristics and manifestation nevertheless it has the same type of uh, what we say same type of. Uh, problems or same type of security issues it arises. Now, if you look at that what are the threats right. So, threats does not mean it is attacked right. So, like vulnerability does not mean that it is compromised, but these are the possible threats. So, classes of threats one is a threat of disclosure right. So, I have a threat of disclosure like what, what which is type of in the attack what we say uh, snooping. So, a threat of deception like modification, spoofing, repudiation of origin, denial of receipt and type of things. So, this is a threat of deception. So, there can be a threat of disruption that is if it is a modified then the threat of disruption of service and, and another is a threat of usurpation that is modification, spoofing, delay, denial of services. So, these are these are different category of threats which are there. So, we have attacks which have security concerns and threats these are different components. Overall whenever a, a, a whenever a IT systems or any information system whether it is organizational or it is personal or it is inter organization intra organization whatever there are guided by policies and mechanisms uh, very uh, tricky issues. Uh, so, policy says what is what is not allowed right. So, the policy says that what is allowed or is that not allowed right. So, it is it tries to do it in a in, in a fashion that which 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 of the things can be allowed and things there can be hierarchical way, way of defining policies there can be different way of things we are not going to that. So, this defines the security of the site systems overall uh, information structure uh, overall network access protocol. Uh, and uh, individual to group to distributed anything right. So, there is a policies usually in organizations policies are made somewhat centralized centralized in the sense it has been formulated across the for uh, all all components of the organizations and it is something a sort of a policy making body does it. Now, incidentally the implementation is most of the time distributed like I say that I have a I have a this IIT Kharagpur network. So, there are several departments there are several sub networks there are several layer 3 plus there are 3 and layer 3 plus type of switches. So, it says the policy is that this way the traffic will go and etcetera etcetera and not only that there additionally there are halls of residence etcetera at the same time uh, this this policy need to be implemented across this different category of devices. So, the implementation is uh, often in a distributed fashion or in different devices and type of things where the. So, now there is a big challenge the how to guarantee this implementation conform to the policy one to one right. It is nothing more or less what the policy defines. So, there is a these are some open uh, not exactly open problem these are very strong research problem across the world that how to how to formally say that your implementation and policy match with each other and so forth. Now, so policies says what is and what is not allowed whereas, on the other hand mechanisms enforce policies right. So, I have mechanism to enforce policies. So, composition of policies if the policies conflict discrepancies may create security vulnerability. 
So, uh, there is another thing if it is if, if when we compose policies. So, if I have several policy and composition of the policies if there are conflicts uh, discrepancies may arise and then that there can be security vulnerabilities like, like I can say that one policy says that this traffic can be allowed or another policy said that this category of traffic should be denied and you see there is a overlap that which can be either allowed or denied you need to decide right. This mainly happens because number of cases is implemented in a distributed way and if sometimes there are uh, there are class in the local versus global policies etcetera. So, this need to be addressed this need to be first of all identified and this need to be addressed and this becomes a very critical thing when there is an organization is pretty large to look at at individual policies and verify and all those things. So, looking all those things so what we have seen there are security models or security objectives there are attack models there are threats and I there are policies and mechanisms. So, these are different components which looks at a different way of the things right. Now, I need to bring them together and uh, have what is my security goal. So, one of the major security goal is prevention prevent attackers from violating security policies. So, that should be there. So, attacker if I have the security policies if it is restricts that thing attacker should be should not be able able to violate the security policies. Detection detect attacker violation of the security policy. So, detection that the when the security policies are being violated by the attackers need to be detected right. So, detection can have a then we will try to the earlier the detection is more uh, strong your security perimeter right. So, we need to detect as early as possible because if the attack has gone on gone into the place then what we what we are left with is more of the post mortem of the what had happened and basically learn to look at the other things. There are uh, issues of uh, another issue is recovery if, if attack and if compromised if down to some extent or fully or uh, partially then how to recover from this thing right. So, what will be my recovery mechanisms mechanism from this type of things like uh, stop attack uh, assess and repair damage uh, continue to function correctly even if the attack succeeds and there are different type of things people uh, that there are in uh, best practices we have in critical system as redundant systems there are logging mechanisms to recover and uh, other things nevertheless we need to recover from the thing uh, to a stage where we where uh, like pre attack stage type of things you know on all doing so we incur cost right all this comes with a cost. Trust and assumptions that is another aspect. So, underlie all aspects of security right. So, I have some trust and assumption I trust this system I assume that system will work fine or this uh, or this particular application and so and so forth things are there. So, it all starts and if you if you look at our day to day uh, life also uh, for uh, security mechanisms we have some sort of a trust, trust and assumptions right. Like I say I understand uh, what we trust that the security person who is guarding that particular installation or particular uh, premise is can be trusted right. So, so I assume that uh, this can be trusted to this extent and so and so forth and type of things. So, this also is important thing. So, policies unambiguously partition system states right. So, that is uh, if you look at the system state system goes on different state because first of all it is a dynamic thing right it is not that it is statically one defined things are there. So, it is it should un unambiguously partition the system state that means I am in this state or this state which state I am there. So, it should be ambiguous partition correctly capture the security requirement of every stage right. So, it will not only partition it should also security requirements of every stage mechanisms assumed to enforce policies. So, mechanisms are there to enforce policies supports mechanisms uh, support mechanisms work uh, correctly. So, that uh, the, the mechanism is basically a implementation or realization of the policies and that should be they are in place. Now, if we look at a, a little bit uh, holistically. So, if I have like 
set of reachable states of a system right. So, if the set of reachable state is in this uh, this type of mesh and uh, if I have a uh, set of secure stages like this type of uh, hash line right. So, when we say that if the set of reachable state is within the overall set of secured state then I say it is fully secure right. So, what I am trying to say that the system goes over different state all are within the security state. So, I have say I have security state security state at S 1 to S 20 as secured my system basically hover between S 5 to S 16. So, that means it is always in the security state it can be precise that the it uh, totally matches with this the set of security and set of reachability is matches other can be broad that means all are not in the security zone or the in the secured state, but a but there are some state which is there right. The one thing we should be we should know that how my security policy mechanisms vis a vis work work. So, that I, I can say that how much secured I am. So, that is a uh, issue of assurance like uh, which consists of specifications right like requirement analysis statement of desired functionalities design how, how the system will meet the specification and implementation program systems that carry out design right. So, what it tries to do that in order to have properly design the thing I can assure that this much security uh, ca has been uh, can be uh, assured based on my uh, my design specification etcetera right. So, this this is these are the best practices which uh, need to be put into place. So, that my security level goes up. Now, there are issues of operational issues or sometimes there are economical issues right cost benefit analysis is it typical uh, it is cheaper to prevent or recover right. So, um, so whether which is costly like it is uh, it is recovering is costly or things like I, I say that uh, I have a lab which has some Linux installation uh, or windows installation or combined of them and we run the lab on day to day basis, but as such I we do not store anything in the system right. So, uh, in that case uh, that is students are supposed to bring their uh, documents or download their uh, codes etcetera run and then uh, release the thing right. But end of the day there is no question of uh, storing any data or there is no responsibility from the authority. So, that the data will be saved etcetera. For that I may not look uh, look for uh, much interested for preventing uh, the attack right. Even some attack is there if I can recognize I can always reinstall that I can have a already a image of the whole uh, system and I can reinstall the image right. But on the other hand if there is a data intensive or say research data etcetera then I am more interested in preventing the attack right or a system which is online running on things I want to prevent the data. Hmm. So, that is cost analysis benefit other is the risk analysis right should we protect something how much should we protect this thing right how much risk is there there are laws and customs right that are desired security measures illegal will people do them etcetera. So, we have different operational issues uh, which are there. There are of course, some of the human issues right organizational problems or people problems. So, there are always human in the loop and there are human issues of uh, responsibility versus authority and so and so forth. So, if we tie them together so threats are there policies are uh, based on the threats policies are made based on the specification based on the things policy specification the design is there based on design that implementation and then operation. These operational issues are feedback either to the implementation or design specification and things or operational issues comes as a threat. So, this is if we try to make them together bring them together it is 
like sort of a thing. Now, what we are looking at as of now is more from the point of view of uh, like from the providers or the from the system point of view like what are the what could be the possible threats, what could be possible policies, how to implement, what is the mechanisms and uh, so on and so forth. Right? But um, if we try to look at that what are the different type of attacks like one is passive attack right often information that is being transmitted eavesdropping. So, it is not the attack, but these are more eavesdropping. So, two types release of message content it may be desirable to prevent the opponent from learning the contents of the transmission. So, release of the message content may be one of the attack traffic analysis like I do not look at the message per se, but I want to look at the traffic right if the traffic is highly um, uh, volatile or heavy or low I try to predict that what could be the effect of the uh, effect of the uh, type of mechanisms going on right. I can say that if there is a very high traffic that may be some sort of a video conferencing or video chat is going on and it may be something need to be looked at to me something if it is a low traffic or uh, medium traffic I can I can say that this is the type of things and based on not only the traffic, traffic versus time etcetera also plays different important role. Usually passive attackers are difficult to detect because they do not do direct harm and are very difficult to detect. Whereas, on the other hand I we have uh, active attackers like involve some modification of the data stream or creation of false streams. So, that is these are all active atta attackers right. So, four categories. So, one one is masquerade, one entity pretends to be different entity. So, that is the one attacker replay passive capture of the data unit and its subsequent retransmission to produce unauthorized effect right. So, this is a replay attack right. So, contained uh, passive capture of the data units and its subsequent retransmission huge amount of retransmission of the data modification some portion of the legitimate message is altered. So, that is the attack of, uh, of modification denial of service prevents the normal use of communication um, facilities. So, this is a DOS type of attack or denial of services attack. So, all these attacks actually create uh, problem in our uh, in, in the operation of the active system. Now, the security services as, as those things we have seen that, that these are the security threats and things security services try to give provide this sort of services right like confidentiality, authenticity, integrity, non repudiation, access control, accessibility right? uh, availability. So, this, uh, this first thing we have discussed non repudiation what we say the order is final right it is like that uh, you say uh, you order something like you say that the bank you instruct your bank that you transfer over online that you transfer x amount from my account to somebody else's account and next day I go to the bank that I never gave this right. So, there is a there is a there should be a way of handling this CSA. So, this non repudiation is uh, is uh, is such thing. So, it is basically says the order is final. Access control is a big field that how this access control will be there there are uh, works on role based access control mechanisms and so and so forth. It is basically say that prevent misuse of resources. So, you should have that particular resource particular access uh, to a particular resource center, so that you can use that resources. Availability performance and non eraser type of services. So, that is general of services service attack and uh, there can be virus that deletes files. So, that is, a, that is also a case of non availability. So, role of uh, security. So, if when you when you talk about computer security, network security, information security, cloud security and so on and so forth, what are the role of uh, thing? The security infrastructure should provide uh, first of all confidentiality right that means, uh, protect against loss of privacy the integrity protection against data altered 
data alteration or corruption. So, that is the protection of this the integrity because as you have seen integrity uh, that uh, during the message transfer the data is being altered. Availability protection against denial of service, authentication, identification of legitimate uh, users. So, that how to identify and authenticate a legitimate user. Hmm. Authorization is a determination of whether or not operation is allowed by a certain user. Non repudiation as we have discussed the order is final. Safety protection against tampering, damage, theft etcetera. Right? And we have a series of attacks based on the different type of vulnerabilities and so and so forth from social engineering to phishing, password attacks, buffer overflow, command injection and etcetera etcetera. So, these are different type of attacks which are there in the information system which are true in some sense uh, for the cloud uh, infrastructure also. Now, if we look at uh, a typical scenario like say network security which is very prominent because the cloud is based on a uh, is basically built on the distributed systems which are uh, leverage on network and so it is important that the basic network level security is high. So, network security works like this determination of the network security policies that what should be the security policy implementing those uh, those policy then uh, reconnaissance. So, that should be to see that whether the security things are in place or not vulnerability scanning like how, how vulnerable I am. So, that look at the vulnerability scanning there is a concept of penetration testing that means or what we say self attacking sort of scenario self and safe attacking scenario that how much I can penetrate to the system. Uh, so, it is a penetration testing and there is a need of post, post attack in uh, investigation if there is a attack then post attack investigation. So, determination of security uh, policy uh, that the security policy is a full uh, security roadmap and for any organization so, uh, small or things if it is a inter organization. So, that the whole what will be the security policies need to be uh, placed right it is a full roadmap to be there. The network design should reflect uh, this policy. So, if it is a network thing so whenever you are designing it should conform this security policies. So, implementing the security policies implementing uh, policies include installation and configuration of security measures like firewalls installation of configuration of IDS uh, and there are several other type of things which need to be there. So, if we look at it is a big picture like this where you have different that is demilitarized zone internal network and uh, that firewall or network address translator NAT switch firewall and type of things right. So, it is it is dual homing or two firewalls are there. So, implement uh, security policies either the policies or the access rules in the firewall or IDS or there is a concept of honey pot or honey net where vulnerable things are there. So, that lot of attacks will be there and uh, the security uh, means security personnels understand that what sort of attacks is there based on that signatures they basically do they basically fine tune their RDA, uh, IDAs or firewall policies. So, the next thing is that need to learn about the network right. So, in order to uh, whether to attack or prevent you need to learn of the network. So, IP address of the host identify key param uh, servers with critical data and so and so forth. So, there are two forms are there one is passive which is undetectable one is active it is uh, often detected by the IDS right. So, there are this is a need there is a vulnerability scanning that uh, as we are dis as we are discussing couple of minutes back that I need to basically scan my vulnerabilities right. So, that how vulnerable I am in the, the system wise. So, there are different scanner there are uh, in case of a network there are different kind of like there is a open source thing NASA's in map and so and so forth. So, that you can basically scan that which are the ports open what are the possible vulnerabilities and type of things right. So, this is important that you scan and see that what is the security quote unquote security health of your uh, installation. So, other scanner will allow to exploit them they are, they are called metasploit and type of things which has a uh, security database there are different uh, security vulnerability database like one such is that in VD national vulnerability database where which 
basically says that what are the different vulnerabilities. So, uh, scanners are need to be updatable so that it goes on as in case of our antivirus etc which are primarily scanners. So, need to update with the signatures and then we have the penetration testing like one we do a vulnerability analysis of a say a network and then looking at the vulnerabilities we do a penetration testing of the system that how much I can penetrate into the systems and type of things. These are safe attacks and uh, let us let us uh, means we, uh, a organization or the security personnel can know that what are the different vulnerability points and put appropriate patches. And finally, we have a post attack investigation the forensics of the attacks the process is heavily guided by the laws that how this post attack or post mortem scenarios came there then retain chain of evidences that how things happens etcetera. So, these are post mortem or post attack scenarios. Now, if you look at in our in case of a cloud all these things also come in different in same or different forms right because these are more generic though we discussed at the end little bit of uh, network related, but these are primarily more generic attacks and then uh, we have uh, mm, this uh, post attack investigations uh, to look at that what are the different attack pattern etcetera. And we will try to look at in our next uh, lecture or so that how what are the implications or what are the specialty uh, of this uh, security in case of cloud computing. Okay. So, we will stop here today. Thank you.